Bonjour mon ami, c'est les agents. Now TGS just recently wrapped up and there's quite a few things they had to show that, I mean, to me, for anyone that's been bored with this games, gener this uh, generation of games, at least up to this point, uh, should feel a bit invigorated. Even if you are like a, a enthusiast of, of rather obscure games. I mean, I've said in the past videos that my opinions that I had on Killer Instinct are not the same as they are now. And the main reason why that is is because when I saw it and experienced it for what it was at the time, I did not like it and I had a lot of gripes with it. But I've seen it now that now that Iron Galaxy has stepped in and decided to improve it further. Not just with just stacking characters, but with balance and of course the most important aspect that has reinvigorated my interest in it is the system changes. I'm not that big of an enthusiast enough to buy the Season 2 pack, at least not right now. To confirm Cinder, then that's one thing. But, on a latter note, a lot of things were shown that definitely interest me and make me happy that I have a PS4 and Xbox One. Bloodborne, a game that there wasn't much footage shown at all before TGS was shown. And I like the graphics, I like the smooth frame rate, it seemed a little boring. Uh, even though the footage was for extended periods of time, but it's probably because the game is still in early development or better yet because of the people playing the game. They weren't terrible, but I didn't really see too much variety in combat. A lot of people com are comparing it to Dark Souls, like a faster paced Dark Souls, but I don't really know about that. Dark Souls is more of an RPG. This game, I don't know if it is going to be an RPG. I mean, it's, it's Studio Japan. Um, who knows? It might be. But even still, that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. The Evil Within, alright, we've seen that already. It's coming out next month, can't wait. Resident Evil Revelations 2, well, I didn't play the first one, but I remember that I did download it recently on discount. So, I'm playing that, and the second one looks kind of interesting, because of course, one of the directors is the director of the second Resident Evil. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that the past Resident Evil games were extremely scary. They had imagery, but I'd say the, the scariest one was the remake of the GameCube Resident Evil. The first one on the GameCube. To me, that was the scariest one, but a lot of people told me that the Revelations kind of plays upon the fear that Dead Space 2 established. It was more of an environmental sphere than the enemy fear as like in the first one, the first Dead Space I'm referring to. I don't really know much of the storyline of Resident Evil Revelations because like I just said I didn't play it. like I literally was just playing it a few minutes ago before I turned this camera on. Um, I have a 2DS so if it's coming out for, if the sequel's coming out for the, two, for the 3DS then I'm ready and I'm willing to play it on that without having to wait for a HD console port of it, which isn't, you know, I don't have a problem with it, but, you know, it kind of is a turn off to make games exclusive for a system, even if it's handheld, and then it get ported over, and I, I mean, imagine how pissed I'd be if I would have bought a 2DS before that, you know, that was one of the games I had, I was hard set upon playing, but, I mean, there are still other games, you know, Legend of Zelda, and then there's Fire Emblem, and Smash 4 is right around the corner, so maybe I'll get it for that. Resident Evil Revelations 2 looks great. Um, other than that, Final Fantasy 15. Yes, finally gameplay of it. The game looks smooth, the game looks solid, and I think that the idea behind an open world Final Fantasy that's not an RPG, well, not an MMO, I should say, is actually pretty good and a lot of people were telling me oh well you know the ATP system was great and they shouldn't have taken it away well the the truth is, is that Final Fantasy X got rid of it and didn't need it so it, it worked perfectly fine without it but then X2 brought it back for no real apparent reason and the, the X2 wasn't terrible but it wasn't as good as its original predecessor so yes, the ATP system, I love it too, but it's time for it to go. It's time for it to change. It's The system is literally like 20 years old. And this would be a fresh start, especially when the last Final Fantasy games we got in the series were, were not that great. 13, eh, no. 12, 
I didn't really care for either. And 11 and 14 are MMO, so they technically don't count. So the last really good one we got was 10. The original 10. Everybody wants the remake of 7, but if it's not going to come out, then we might as well have something new and fresh to offer. 15 looks good. Now, Final Fantasy Type-0. I had heard about this in the past, but didn't really do much research on it. I looked up at the old trailer and looked at the old gameplay, and it was scheduled to come out in 2011 on the PSP. But, of course, got canceled when the Vita was announced, and, you know, they stopped supporting the PSP. Now, for this game, it's the same. It's more so being developed for the Vita, from what I can understand. The graphics are improved. But I wasn't really impressed or interested in what was shown as far as the gameplay is concerned. Once again, just like in Bloodborne's case, maybe it was because of the person playing it. But it just seemed rather uninteresting. And then it wasn't a live stream footage we were seeing. It was like off-screen cam footage. Not to degrade it, but it kind of takes away. And, you know, I just recently bought an S3. I've said this in the past videos, but uh, usually when I watch these videos, I watch it on my S3 because my computer at times has problems handling rendering HD videos without it crashing or dropping frames. So, you know, I get my phone and then I put my headphones on and I kind of really analyze what I'm looking at here. The game doesn't look terrible, but I need to see a little more than what I saw. And I'm not too happy about that. Okay, 15 looks great. Type 0 looks good. Another game that I wasn't surprised, or rather, I should say, was surprised to see looked a bit more more interesting than my expectations is Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse. I'm usually pretty hard upon how I feel about anime fighters or anime-themed um, games because of balance or, more importantly, they're just kind of boring in terms of what it has to deliver in terms of content. And when I heard about the features of this, I was like, yeah, I'm not real. I don't really care. But I saw the trailer. The trailer actually looks good. And it's been a long time since I've said that about any Dragon Ball Z game that's been released. Because Dragon Ball Z, is, it kind of, the past several games that have been released, it has kind of suffered Street Fighter II Syndrome. You know, it's like the same game just repackaged with a different title but it's the same engine and when they tried to make something different Dragon Ball's Battle of Z oh god the game was so bad like it was terrible it was boring it was everything wrong with video games today and I feel bad for anyone that actually bought that fucking game on release expecting much more than what we saw for ourselves and I saw it as being a bad game before the game came out and when I you had a chance to play it, I wasn't surprised that it was worse than my expectations. But Xenoverse looks nice. It would be a great invitation for anyone who hasn't picked up a next-gen console by now. I like the graphics. I like the storyline. I like the aspect that the, the game actually has its own storyline and actually correlates to the gameplay features. The creative say mode, I'm not really big on creating character modes. But if this means that the rest of the characters are going to be solid, uh, I'm glad to see new animations with older characters. Personal favorite was regular Android 17. Not Super 17, I prefer Android 17, but whatever. I'll play the game whenever it comes out. It looks interesting. I hope that the combo system's a bit more varied. It doesn't have to be real complicated. I don't have. I shouldn't have to look at frame data to, oh, well, this is a two or three frame link. No, I, I, I think it should not just be like the Budokai and Tenkaiji games where it was like doing combos were like entering codes where like there was no there was no window to any type of variation it was just you know this is it the end all be all way of comboing this move to that move or canceling this move to this move otherwise it won't string together I hope they resolve that issue this year's TGS and of course how could I forget Metal Gear Solid 5 Oh my god, they had 20 minutes, 20 minutes of uninterrupted gameplay. I am ready for this game. I mean, yeah, Hideo Kojima pretty much feeds on our tears at this point. And they didn't really, from what I can understand, they didn't really show much on Silent Hill since, you know, he is involved with the project. I'm going to look more into it. Maybe there was, other than what we've already seen uh, outside of PT. But I'm ready for that game. MGS5 looks 
man, if you haven't seen it for yourself, it looks fucking solid. Even if, no pun intended, I just realized what I just said. But even if you're not a Metal Gear Solid fan, like this, this will be a nice little start because I, it, it seems more action-oriented, but the stealth elements are still there. I sure hope that the game provides, still provides a hurdy challenge and not just something that you can kind of just sweep under the rug after you're done and whatnot. This year's TGS, I'm pretty happy and satisfied with just like this year's E3. I'm pretty satisfied with the, with the results. And if we keep things coming like this, then scandals like Gamergate will not only be a thing of the past, but they won't even matter. Oh, John, I'm going to see my enemies. Come on, my delight.